balancing equations. In the previous chapter, we looked at counting atoms. Counting atoms, the lesson on counting atoms is very important when it comes to balancing equations. We think of the word balancing, and it means to pretty much keep the same amount on both sides of a, some kind of a scale. Okay, and that will be our equation. And we're going to look at that in just a second. So we've seen the following. We know that how do you make water? Well, if you combine hydrogen and oxygen, we'll make water. Okay, so let's write out a chemical formula for the following. So hydrogen we know is H. We know oxygen is O and we know water is H2O. So H plus O produces H2O, right? Wrong. One thing to keep in mind is that when you see the word hydrogen, and we're thinking of it in terms of um, a molecule. And the same thing with oxygen. We know that hydrogen is an element in the periodic table. Okay, uh, hydrogen is, oxygen is. Okay, but in terms of a, a formula, we have to treat it as a molecule. And the molecule of hydrogen is not just H. It's not just O. Okay, we know that both hydrogen and oxygen are diatomic molecules. Diatomic meaning two. So we are not going to write down H plus O, but instead we are going to write down H2 plus O2. Okay. Remember, okay, very important step that whenever we see the hydrogen molecule, whenever we see the oxygen molecule in a balance equation or in a skeleton equation that's written in words, you will never, ever just write the H and just the O. You write it down always as H2O, as O2. Okay. So, here is the, the, the equation to pr pretty much create water. We combine hydrogen and oxygen to produce water. Okay. Now, what did we put together? We put together hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen and oxygen are what we call the reactants. Okay, they're called the reactants because they're the, 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 the parts that react with one another to create some kind of a final product. Okay, so we have our arrow here and the arrow now separates pretty much our reactants okay, from our product. Now, our reactants, they react, as we said, to form some kind of a final product. So whenever you see an equation, keep in mind that to the left of the arrow are the reactants, to the right of the arrow are our products. Okay, so let's look at the following equation and let's try to balance the following equation or let's see if it is already balanced. So we have H2 plus O2 produces H2O. Now, step one. What you want to do is you want to separate your left side and your right side of the, the, the equation. Okay, and that's pretty much done by creating this line here down the arrow. Notice here we are separating our reactants from our products. Okay, now we're going to list the elements that we find. So what elements do we have in the reactant side? What elements do we have in the product side? And notice that they are both the same. So they're both contain hydrogen. They both contain oxygen. Okay. So let's look at how many hydrogens do we have on both sides? So let's look on reactant side. We have two hydrogens on the reactant side and we have two on the product side. So far they're balanced. They both have the same amount. So how many oxygens now do we have on the reactant side? Well, we have two oxygens, but if we look over on the product side, we notice that we only have one oxygen, which means I need to increase the amount of oxygens on that side. So how do I increase it? Well, start balancing both sides by putting a number in front of each molecule, okay? A thing to keep in mind, to look for polyatomic ions first, leave diatomic molecules for last. Okay? So, we want to make sure that the reactant side, product side are both balanced, but they're not. Okay? So, we want to 
eventually increase the number of oxygen. So what are we going to do? Well, we have one oxygen, but we don't want one oxygen. So how do I change the one oxygen? So what do I have to do? I have to make sure that I'm going to put my number in front of the compound. So now, by putting this two, how many oxygens do I have? I no longer have one oxygen. I have two oxygens, which means now I do not have to increase the number of oxygens on this side. But the minute I put the two in front there, I now change my hydrogen. And this is the part when I said about keeping an open mind. Don't worry. If it changes something else, it's okay. That's part of the process of balancing equations. So we put the two in there to balance our oxygen. But when we put the two in front, it changed our hydrogens. And it changed our hydrogens no longer now for two hydrogens. We now have a total of four hydrogens, which means now if we look at the reactant side, we need to increase the number of hydrogen on the reactant side. And it's as easy as, and, and what's the number? We have the number two, right? So what number should we put in front of the hydrogen? Well, if we put a two here in front of the hydrogen, we now will increase our hydrogens to a number of four, which means now we no longer need to balance the hydrogens. And now what we want to do is we want to look and compare. We have four hydrogens, four hydrogens. We have two oxygens, two oxygens. We now have a balanced equation. So the final step here, it says rewrite the new balanced equation. And the new balanced equation is 2H2 plus O2 produces two molecules of water. So in reality, to make one molecule of water, it's not enough to just combine one hydrogen, one oxygen. We are technically putting together two molecules of hydrogen combined with one molecule of oxygen. But in turn, we will be creating two molecules of water. And this is what we have pretty much now, a balanced equation. Let's look at the following equation here. Gets a little more complicated. That one was a real simple one. Here's where things get a little bit complicated. But again, it's not really very hard. We have aluminum hydroxide plus sulfuric acid produces aluminum sulfate and water. One thing to keep in mind is <coughs> we have water on one side of our, um, ba our balanced equation. The one thing to look out for, look for the polyatomic hydroxide. Okay. If you can find the polyatomic hydroxide on the other, then you can do the following change to the, the equation. And that is rewrite water as HOH. Now you have hydroxide instead of what we had there H2O. We had H2O to start with, but because we had, we said if we have water and we have hydroxide on the opposite side, we can rewrite H2O as HOH. And if you notice now here, once I erase all this, H2O is really here, H2 with the one O. Okay. And this will help make balancing equations that much easier. Okay, so first step, what we want to do, we want to separate our reactants from our products. Okay, and we do that by putting in our arrow here, okay, by the arrow and creating that dotted line that separates the left side from the right side. And we're not going to refer to it as the left side and right side. We're going to refer to it as the reactants and the product side. Next step is we're going to list, okay, we're going to list the atoms that are found on both sides. And if you notice, they're both the same. Keep in mind also, another little rule that I like to, to do is I like to make sure that I have 
I write down, I list my, uh, my atoms in the same order. By listing the same atoms in the same order, it allows me to, to find pretty much the, um, the, the comparison between the two atoms and the two sides. So now, here's a, a, a rule at the bottom. As we said in the previous slide, balance polyatomics first. So let's balance one of them. Now, let's list the numbers that we have right now. Let's look at the reactant side. Reactants, we have aluminum, one aluminum. On the product side, we have two aluminum. Now, you look at the one that's the smallest, and we know that we need to increase the number of aluminum on the reactant side because we have more on the product side. Hydrogen, okay? We have hydrogen, and even though we have hydrogen in the um, in here, we have hydrogen there, and we have hydrogen in the hydroxide. Remember what we said? Well, we're going to treat the hydroxide as hydroxide, and now we have this H with this H. So this allows us to balance a lot easier. Okay, so how many hydrogens do we have on this side? And we're looking at only these ones. Okay, so we're looking at these ones. And if you look at it, we have a total of two hydrogens. If we look over on the product side, we have one hydrogen, which means we need to increase the number of hydrogens on the product side. Okay, we're looking at hydroxide on the reactant side. Here is the hydroxide, but this three outside the brackets means I have three of whatever is within the brackets, which means I have a total of three hydroxides. If we look over on the product side, we only have one hydroxide, which means we have to increase the smaller of the two. Okay. And if we look now, finally, the sulfate, we have one sulfate molecule. Okay. This whole thing, this is one molecule of sulfate. And over on this side, we have the sulfate is contained within the brackets, but this three outside of the brackets means that I have three total molecules of sulfate, which means, as we said, we need to increase the side that is lower. Okay, so let me erase some of this because this is what now where we're going to need to start balancing. Okay, so we're going to use a different color here. Now, as we said here, we want to balance polyatomics first. So we're either going to balance this polyatomic or this polyatomic. Okay. So let's look at this polyatomic. Let's do hydroxide here. So we know that one hydroxide is not enough. We need to increase that one to three. So we know that we have to put a number here in front of whatever is going to change this compound. Okay, so the number right now technically in front of this is a one, but that one's not working. That one is what's keeping one hydrogen and one hydroxide. So what we're going to do is we know that one doesn't work. If we put two is not going to work, we're going to put a three and hope that that's going to work. When I put that three, now the hydroxide count no longer is one on the product side, but it becomes three which means now we have three hydroxide here, three hydroxide here, which means now I no longer need to balance that right now. Not yet. We don't know yet. It might work. It might not work. When I put the three there, it also changed my hydrogen count. My hydrogen count now is no longer one, but my hydrogen count here now is three. And we look over on the other side and we notice that, well, I, we've now increased the hydrogen by a little bit more, which means we can't increase this hydrogen anymore, or at least not yet. We now need to increase the hydrogen on the reactant side. Okay. And that's kind of changed things around. But again, we're going to work on it slowly. So right now, what do we need left? We need to increase aluminum. We need to increase hydrogen. We need to increase uh, sulfate. But again, we're going to balance polyatomics first. So this one sulfate's not enough. So what number am I going to put here in front of this sulfate? Well, I'm going to change this sulfate now, and I'm going to put the number three. We know the number one originally didn't work. We know two is no point, 
because by multiplying it by three, we are now multiplying three sulfates. So now we have a total of three sulfates, which means now I no longer need to balance the sulfates. Sulfates so far are balanced, but again, let's not jump the gun. We don't know if that's the right number, but we will find out as time goes on. The minute we change that, what else changed? Well, the hydrogens. The hydrogens now used to be two, but now the hydrogens have turned into six hydrogens, which means now we don't no longer need to increase the hydrogens on this side, but we need to increase now the hydrogens on that side. Okay, so now we need to increase the hydrogen. So which means now let's move on to aluminum. Okay, for me to balance aluminums, we need to increase the aluminum on the reacted side. So we're going to put in a number two here in front because we know the number originally wasn't enough that was in front of it. So we're going to try the next number. Now we have a total of two aluminums, which means so far we no longer need to balance aluminum. But the minute we change that, it now changed the number of hydroxides. We started off with three hydroxides, but now once that two came in, the count here for hydroxide has turned to six, which means now I need to increase the hydroxides over on the product side. And now notice the number that we had originally. We had the number three. Did the number three work? No, it did not. So what that means is three doesn't work. For me to increase that three to six, I, the three doesn't work. I'm gonna put in six in there because now I have a total of six hydrogens, okay? And I have a total now of six hydroxides, which means I don't need to balance the hydrogen. I don't need to balance my hydroxides. In fact, if I look and compare my reactants and my product side, our aluminums both have two on both sides. On the reactive side, our hydrogens have six. On the products, we have six. In terms of hydroxide, we have six hydroxide on the reactive side. We have six on the product side. And lastly, we have three sulfates on the reactive side and three sulfates on the product side. So in the end, this looks kind of messy, okay? But here are the numbers, okay? We have a two, we have a three, we didn't need to change anything here, and this, the number that we originally had didn't work. So we had to change that number to six. Now, what's the last step that you should really do after you've done that? Never leave it just like that. What I want you to do is I want you to rewrite the equation cleanly okay so don't just fill in the spaces that you're given in a worksheet rewrite the entire equation with the new balanced numbers in front of it copper plus silver nitrate produces copper to nitrate plus silver, okay? Now, what you have to be real careful is, we're going back now to chapters three and four when it came to naming binary compounds and naming transition metals and in chapter four, naming polyatomic compounds. We know what silver is. We hopefully remember what nitrate is. We hope to know how to use that too. And we hope to know how to put it all together. So in reality, you have to be able to put the formula together correctly as follows. So we have Cu plus AgNO4 produces Cu brackets NO3 close brackets 2 plus Ag. Notice that metals are not diatomic. Metals appear as is. Okay. Copper is Cu. Silver, Ag, magnesium, Mg. Okay, when they're bonded with something else, that's when these lower su subscripts start to come into play. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to balance it. So how do we balance the following equation? Well, just like before, here's our arrow that separates 
our reactants from our products. So, separate both sides. We have copper, copper. We have silver, silver. We have nitrate. So now let's go about changing the numbers. So, how many coppers do we have on the reactant side? We have one. How many on the product side? One. How many silvers do we have on the reactant side? One. How many on the product side? Well, we have one. How many nitrates do we have on the reactant side? Well, we have just the one. How many on the product side here? This two now throws it off. And now we have to try to balance this, which means we have less nitrate. So which means I have to increase the number of nitrates on the reactant side. So what am I going to do? I'm going to put a two there, which means now this two changes my nitrates to two nitrates, which means I no longer need to balance that. But the minute I put that two there, what else changed? The, the silver changed which means now I gotta increase the silvers on the opposite side. And now notice here, I need to, the only thing that's left to balance is the lonely silver on this side, on the, on the product side. What do I do? I just put in a two in front of it. Now we have two silvers and we no longer need to balance the silver. So what do we have? One copper, two silvers, give us a final formula as follows. Cu plus 2Ag NO3 produces Cu brackets NO3 close brackets 2 plus 2Ag. And there is our balanced equation.